Welcome to Farm Fence Solutions Tips and Tricks Episode 2 and today we're going to go over how to gut strain a high tensile fixed knot woven wire fence. Uh, today we're going to be using 134812 from Tornado Wire um, fixed knot class 3 galvanized all high tensile and uh, so anyway we're going to show you how we stretch it up and I hope you enjoy. First step is to strip a row of knots off, which is really quite simple. If you just cut the vertical stay inside of the knot, and then with a pair of pliers, fold the knot over backwards on itself, and it loosens right up, and comes right off. Next step is gonna to be to tie your wire off to your end post, uh, whether you're tying a hand knot or using a T-clip gripple. Uh, I prefer to tie the top side of my brace strut first. So that you can move the wire up and down yet to give yourself just a little bit more room. It will slide the wire down to make more room for your hands. Tying the wire below the horizontal strut. This is just a simple termination knot. And then slide that back up where you want it to live permanently, which is going to be right about there. And tie the remaining wires off. When you get to the bottom on a traditional wood brace, uh, it gets pretty crowded with your brace wire. Uh, if you've got a bottom line wire up. So this is an ideal place to uh, get out a gripple T-clip. Where you run out of room for your hands. This is what your tied off end should look like using a high tensile termination knot. And we're ready to string our wire.
Today we're going to be using a wedge style net board with a strain right boundary strainer uh, and we're going to make our join uh, where we cut the wire with medium gripples and then uh, put the final tension on with a gripple contractor tool. These are 60 inch net boards, obviously work just fine on 48 inch fence. And you just tighten them up. These are the strain right boundary strainers. This is a brand new set. It's important to keep your chain straight, otherwise when it starts to come under tension, these dogs will have a hard time walking up that chain and you end up with them. A little bit of a mess. This is a relatively short run, uh, a little bit less than 200 feet. So we're not going to get very much slack out of this. Uh, same principle applies in a big stretch and we'll try to show you one in the future uh, we'll use this method up to a half a mile and it works just fine You want to tighten until about half of the tension curve is out on your tension parts of the wire. Uh, we're just about there. Okay, now we've got our tension uh, where we want it. So it's time to cut the wire and we're going to use a medium gripple to join the wire and take all the slack out from between the net boards.
when you're making your cuts for your gripples uh, you want to keep in mind that you need uh, enough tail to get the uh, contractor tool on to pull your slack through uh, and if you can plan around the tension curves that's great uh, if not you'll have to straighten some of those out uh, just with some a small set of clines and so at least one side of that make sure to run out enough slack to get the jaws of the gripple tool on go ahead and trim the rest of these up prompted me to make these videos uh, was watching uh, the experts on YouTube and uh, just how difficult they were making it and just pretty much doing it wrong in my opinion uh, See a lot of them with two guys and their hands are in each other's way. And simply take the slack out between your net boards with the gripper contractor tool. And then you simply tidy your ends up, leaving enough tail on your wire. Come back, should you ever need to, to make a repair or a splice, put more tension in the wire. You end up with a join that looks like this. I don't know if you can tell that those stays are a little bit wider at the bottom than they are at the top in our join there. Uh, this is a short run and it does have a little bit of a dip to it. So that's one benefit of a gut strain. You can make your adjustment in the middle um, where it needs to be in my opinion. We can strain to an end and, and uh, make the adjustment also but this is just a little bit easier. We could also make a gut strain, uh, tying a hand knot, either a figure eight or a reef knot. But the gripples are considerably faster, easier. Uh, and then you've got the ability to tension with a gripple as well. In a, in a really short run, uh, we'll even use a gripple uh, instead of the strainers to tension an entire uh, stretch of wire. Right there we've got, that's a strain right tension gauge. Uh, we're running hmm, a little tighter than what's recommended, which is what we generally do. Uh, we'll run about 200 kilos. 150 kilos is standard for 12 and a half gauge high tensile wire. Manufacturer may not be too proud of us, but that's the way we do it. So it's time to knock the boards out and fasten to the post.
Again, this isn't a real long stretch, just shy of 200 feet, but no fasteners in it. Hopefully this will help you strain your wire just a little quicker, a little easier. Save you some time. I watched a video there a day or two ago. And uh, they actually took the time to build a dummy brace out the end of their brace to stretch the wire off of. Which didn't seem logical to me. When you could just do it like this. Or do a real end strain. Either one. Here's the thing about tornado wire versus any of the competition. Uh, it's 12 and a half gauge top to bottom. There's no bigger top line or bottom line like a 12 gauge you typically find with other high tensile net wire manufacturers. Uh, it just does not logical. It doesn't make any sense uh, because in a high tensile net uh, you want good even tension. And if you put a bigger wire top or bottom, uh, it's going to have to have a lower tensile strength uh, to even out to a smaller wire, uh, which is going to be pretty difficult to match. Uh, not to mention, just their, their line wires in general won't match. Uh, Tornado's not a steel company, it's a fence company. So we can test any of those, and they're going to be really, really close. If I did a good job... They're all going to be within... 5% and that's because they do their job you could put this on any other brand of wire uh, in a short run especially it really will show in a short run and you're not, not going to get an even tension and that is just across the board perfect and with a good proper tension that's what you get Just a quick review of the steps to make a gut strain in net wire would be to tie your ends off and then come to the middle with your net boards and then whether you're using chain strainers or come alongs, put the tension in the wire and then cut your slack out and make a join whether it's with a knot uh, gripples like we've done here uh, crimp sleeves work just fine also and then fasten your wire to the post and it's just that simple all of the products and tools that we've used uh, in this video and the other videos are available at farm fence solutions you can call us anytime, 844-48-FENCE, or visit farmfencesolutions.com. Of course, we've got lots of products that weren't in the videos. Uh, just about any kind of woven wire you can dream up. Staples, posts, tools, barbed wire net wire and rolls up to a quarter mile barbed wire and rolls up to a mile these posts are about 16 feet on center i'll take you up the hill here and show you some we tested at about 50 feet this is a 949 12 fixed knot high tensile woven wire from tornado And as you can see, we've got pretty big post spacing here. This is a just a test patch on our own place, uh, about 50 feet between posts. Uh, it's not something I'd recommend if you're running cows in heat on one side and a pen of bulls on the other. But this is a fairly low pressure place. Uh, 
fence is plenty snug. Got a hot wire across the top. Again, I wouldn't recommend that for just every situation, but it's working just fine here.